Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I will show you how to create a full authentication system using the best practices like encrypting password and creating what is known as the digital passport, which is a JWT token that the user can use to access other endpoints in your API. I have split this video into three parts. Uh, the first part, I'm going to show you the database and also we're going to create the two primary endpoints, the login and the register. And in the next part, I will show you, uh, I will create the rest of the uh, API endpoints like reset password and retrieve password. And also we're going to create additional endpoint, which is going to be the notifications, because this is not only about uh, creating authentication system, but actually I will show you how to use the JWT T token, which is again a digital passport to access the rest of the API endpoints. And finally, in the last video, I will show you, uh, we're going to move to the front end. I will show you how we can authenticate the user and fetch uh, user notifications. So in this video, I'm going to begin by first, I will show you what do we have in our database. And here we have two tables the notifications and the users. Let me show you the structure for uh, the users. And we have the user ID, which is a primary key. And then we have username and then user email, which is again, another uh, key, a unique key to make sure that we don't, uh, we avoid duplications for user email in our database. And then we have user password and then retrieve uh, pass token. And last, we have the pass uh, token expiry. Let me back to my uh, cursor. So we're gonna begin by in this, uh, creating a node uh, app so i'm gonna say not uh init y and then we're gonna install uh the libraries and frameworks that we will need so i'm going to say npm install first we're gonna install the express framework and then we're gonna have the mysql2 and what else we're gonna need uh, uh what else let me begin with that actually and then we're gonna install the nodmon we're gonna say npm install nodmon uh, save dev and here I'm going to the package.json and I will define my scripts and in case if you don't know what is Nodmon it's a development tool that help us like every time we modify our code the Nodmon will restart the node server so our modifications will reflect like you imagine if every time you need uh, you modify your code you will need to manually restart the server so I'm going to create the SQL client dot GS and I will import uh, create pool uh, and then we're going to say uh, we're going to use the create pool function. We're going to pass the database information. OK, and then we're going to export. Uh, let me. Uh, OK, let's just keep it uh, that. And then we're going to create the index dot GS. I will import express. And then we're gonna say const app is going to instantiate the express. And then we're gonna say uh, app.use uh, express.json. And then we're gonna listen on the port 3000. And here we're gonna create our first endpoint. Let's just put it on the home page. And here, let's, let me pass a function to show you how the express work. So Express give us, we pass a function here in the second parameter. In the first parameter, we pass the path or the extension. And in the next uh, argument or parameter, we pass the function. And our function, uh, the Express provide our function with two uh, arguments or two parameters. The first parameter is the request. That uh, object, it's in, it's, there are two objects. The first object is the request, which contains all uh, the information that are uh, coming from the outside. So if you're sending information from your front end, uh, all these information are going to be inside uh, the request object. And the response object is another object we use to, uh, it contains a few functions we can use to display or send information to uh, the user. So I'm going to start with something uh, uh, simple. Let's just test our uh, hello world. So I'm going to save and then I will npm run dev. Okay, we have an issue. I didn't save the package.json. Let me try again. Okay, again, again, another warning. It's about model. I forgot to define the type. So let me go the package and then we're going to say type is going to be module. And our server is running. Let's go in the browser and then we're going to have 
Um, okay, now we have our hello world. So our server is running. We're going to create a folder. We're going to call it API. Inside the API, we're going to create another folder. We're going to call it auth. And then we're going to create our two endpoints. Like I, I prefer to put each function in one file. You can put all the functions in one file, but I prefer to create a file for each function. So I'm going to create the login.js and then I'm going to create the register.js. And here I'm going to import our, uh, our uh, SQL client. And then we're going to create our uh, function. Okay. Okay, and here, as you can see, we are destructuring those three variables from uh, the request object. And as I said, the request object is the object that contains all the information that are coming from the outside. So we are destructuring those uh, variables. I'm going to first check if we have all these variables. Otherwise, we are going to display an error. And as you can see, I'm being uh, generic in here. I have all uh, the validations in one um, if statement, but you can be more specific about that. You can put like multiple if statement for each variable of those. And with each one will have different and a specific error message. But just to be efficient and short, I will keep that. And here we are going to hash our password. I'm going to say hash the password. I'm actually going to install uh, the uh, pcrypt. I'm going to say install pcrypt. Uh, and then I'm going to import uh, the pcrypt. And from pcrypt, we are going to use the hash function. And then we're going to pass the password. And here, this is the number of rounds. And uh, from the documentation of the bcrypt, this number, uh, the more you increase that number, the more secure the password is going to be, but the more computation power you will need. So the best number or uh, the proper number to put here is 10 rounds. This makes the password uh, very secure in the same time, doesn't take time and computation power uh, to work. So I'm going to uh, replace the password by the hashed password. And then, of course, we are going to execute our SQL query. We are going to use uh, the SQL client object and we're going to use the query function. And then we are going to say insert into our table, uh, which is called users. And then we're going to provide uh, the names for our columns that we have here in the database. And of course, the names has to be exactly the same. Otherwise, you're going to get SQL error. And then we provide placeholders. And then we provide the variables uh, in exactly the same sequence, like the placeholders. And here, we are, we're going to remove that, error, uh, that success message. And then we're going to check if rows, dot affected rows. Uh, we're going to check if we do have, uh, uh, there are some affected rows, like something change it in the database, which of course means we have successfully inserted the new uh, record. We are going to, we can just send a success message. Otherwise we have an error in here, but here we are not just going to display or send a success message because there are so much things to do. The first thing is to create a JWT token. So let me first make sure I have installed it. I'm going to uh, check. Okay, I didn't install it, so I'm going to say npm install JSON web token. And what else do I need? Uh, I think .env, I didn't install it. Okay. Now, let me go back to my uh, register and then I will import the JWT. And here I will say uh, token means uh, or equal to JWT.sign. And then we are going to provide an object which contain all the information that we want to have inside the token. And uh, till now we have only the email and username, and then we're going to pro uh, provide the JWT secret, which is going to be like a password for the encryption. And that has to be something very long and very hard to guess, treated just like a password. So we are going to create a .env and inside it, we are going to say JWT uh, token and is going to be, we are going to generate something like a uh, very long hash. So let me node uh, execute and then we're gonna say uh, console.log 
and then let's use um, the correct to library let me require require uh, grip to dot uh, random bytes and it's gonna be 60 or something and then to string and it's gonna be hex hopefully this is gonna work okay we have got the hash it's something very long and let me copy the name it's gonna be jwt secret not token okay and that's it let me save and in the index we have to of course configure the dot env let me import dot env and dot env dot config okay and let me go back in the register and all good and now let's uh let's return something the response type is going to be success and then the message and actually i don't need the message or just let's keep it and the data is going to be username uh, email and username and the token is going to be talking let me again start our server i'm going to say npm uh, run dev and let me go to my postman i will change this to register then i'm going to uh, the body and row and i will provide username is going to be uh, okay uh, user email is going to be uh, just anything okay gmail.com and user password is going to be actually it's not the names are not correct let me copy it it's just email password and username yes okay username email and password okay and let's send it's hello world because i forgot to add the endpoint in the index and let me go to the index and let me uh, let's remove that uh, dot use and let me import so instead of passing the function like that we are going to pass it uh, let me import it first i will import register and we will pass it directly like that and let me send again okay we as you can see we have success message now we have completed the registration uh functionality now let's move to the login functionality i will create another file or actually i do have it i will just import sql client and we also import the bcrypt and we are again receiving the email and password from the body and we have if statement we make sure that we are getting what we we expecting and then we send a request or a query to the database asking for a user that equal to that email now you might think because in the old times what we were doing is we used to do something like we say hash it uh, password and when uh, and we just hash the password just like we did in the register and then we send a request to the database we ask give me a user that equal to that email and also a password that is equal to the hashed password we have here well if you did that it will not work the reason is uh, the bcrypt uh, library it add one more security layer which is the password every time you encrypt the password even if it's the same password you're going to get a different hash they are doing it like that so if you have two users in the database with the very same password they're gonna have two different hashes so the hash the hash we are getting from that uh, line is going to be different than the one we are we have encrypted before so the way to confirm or to validate if uh, the user uh, details are correct is to first get only the user email and after you do that uh, of course here we're going to check first if we do have it uh, if we do if like the database uh, return it zero records which mean no results that mean invalid email uh, but if we do have a record we're going to say uh, the user we're going to receive of course the data from uh, the, the rows and then we're gonna use a function another function that comes with the bcrypt it's called compare 
we're gonna pass the password we have here which is a row password without encryption and in the, ne the next uh, parameter uh, or the next argument we're gonna pass the encrypted password that is coming from the database so the first is going to be the new password the one you're gonna validate and second you're gonna pass the encrypted password you have in the database and of course, uh, we're going to say, uh, I have a variable here is going to be true or valid based on the result. So here I'm checking if password is valid, uh, is invalid, I'm going to display an error message. Otherwise, we are uh, going to create another, the token again. We're going to pass the object is going to be the ID, user ID, user email, and username. And of course, we're going to pass the JWT secret and the, exp uh, the expire uh, time uh, or period you can you can uh, like we have it one hour here you can make it 15 minutes or 30 minutes it depends on how much security you want in your app uh, and here we are again sending a 200 uh, uh, stitches is going to be 200 which is a success uh, code and here we are displaying a message login successful and the token and also uh, the data, of course, is going to be the email, username, and the ID. Let me save and let me go back to the index and we're going to add a login. Actually, what did I do here is register and then login. And let me import the login function. And let's go to the postman. I will say login is and let me confirm what uh, the function expecting from us. Okay, just email and the password. Okay, let me, okay, username, user email and password. Yes, email and password, let's try. And error bcrypt is not defined. Yeah, I forgot that we're gonna need it. Okay. Okay, as you can see, the login uh, successful. So in this video, we have created the two endpoints, the login and the register. In the next video, I'll show you how we can create the two other endpoints, the reset password and also the forget password. And also we're gonna create another uh, additional endpoint, the um, notifications to show you how we're gonna use uh, this token we have here as a digital passport uh, to access other endpoints. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.